24 minutes after the hour on the Michael Medved Show, uh, where it's easy to save 15% or even more on car insurance with GEICO. You just go to GEICO.com or you call 1-800-947-AUTO. The only hard part is figuring out which way is easier. And of all the candidates who won a big upset election victories back in 2010, one of the most exciting was Nikki Haley, who was elected the governor of South Carolina with very strong support from Sarah Palin, very strong support from the Tea Party. She is very, very much a strong conservative on values issues and and as well as on fiscal issues. Uh, governor Haley is also the author of a brand new book which tells her story. It's called Can't Is Not an Option, My American Story, and the title is based on Actually, it's based on a um, a sign that your immigrant family had when they established themselves in South Carolina. Uh, Governor Haley, thanks very much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Michael. It's great to be with you and all your listeners. Well, th- I, I know that there are tons of people who are eager to ask you questions as well, which you'll have a chance to do at 1-800-955-1776. Before we go to your story and, and the story uh, in, in your book and also future potential chapters, Let's uh, go back to President Obama, because I've been talking with people today about what I found to be a very disturbing speech that he gave. It's a very, very long speech uh, that he delivered yesterday to the Associated Press. But but part of that speech sounded like this when he talked about the so-called Republican philosophy of trickle down economics. And here's what he had to say. So we've tried this theory out. And you would think that after the results of this experiment in trickle-down economics, after the results were made painfully clear, that the proponents of this theory might show some humility, might moderate their views a bit. You would think they'd say, you know what, maybe some rules and regulations are necessary to protect the economy and prevent people from being taken advantage of by insurance companies or credit card companies or mortgage lenders. Maybe, just maybe, at a time of growing debt and widening inequality, we should hold off on giving the wealthiest Americans another round of big tax cuts. Maybe when we know that most of today's middle class jobs require more than a high school degree, we shouldn't gut education or lay off thousands of teachers or raise interest rates on college loans or take away people's financial aid. But that's exactly the opposite of what they've done. Instead of moderating their views even slightly, The Republicans running Congress right now have doubled down and proposed a budget so far to the right, it makes the contract with America look like the New Deal. Um, All right, uh, Governor Haley, uh, are you one of those people you want to gut education? I'm just shocked. Do you know, I mean, what (laughs) it, it is beyond me that he can sit there and scold everyone like that saying it's his way or no way. When this man has not been able to get a budget balanced, he has had more debt in the last three years than Bush did in eight. He continues to, you know, he came in as a candidate on hope and change and how he was going to do great things to the economy and the stimulus unemployment wouldn't come above 8%, and we see it's above that. He came in with all this, and now it's this gloom and doom, and if you don't reelect me, we're in, a, in big trouble. It's amazing to me. I mean, he's very talented at distraction and that's all he's doing he doesn't want to point to his record so he's going to blame anybody and everybody so that he can distract the american public what he doesn't understand is we're a whole lot smarter than that 1-800-955-1776 speaking to governor nikki haley of south carolina governor haley you have to balance your budget in your state it's not an option is it that it can't was not an option i mean this is the thing is all the governors had to go through terrible budgets. And the reason we had to go through budgets is because the federal government forced states to take stimulus money that only cost their agencies to spend more money down the road. It was a ridiculous concept. It's one that I didn't support then. I think everybody sees now that you can't go and and have the stimulus approach that starts new things and tells you how to do it for your state when every state is different. So we all had to come back and start cutting and try to figure out a way out of it. We prioritized we capped spending, we cut spending, and we started and we balanced our budget. And that is the requirement to getting economic stability in your state. And the only way we're going to get economic stability in Washington, D.C., is if they agree they've got to balance their budget. And government cannot be all things to all people. It was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never intended to be all things to all people. And this president just... 
I mean, if he wants to talk about the New Deal, he has completely gone back to the concept of the New Deal, where he thinks that the private sector has failed and the government needs to come in and fix it. All right. We will talk about what's wrong with that and also what's right with a country that uh, just elected a little while ago uh, the first non-white governor of South Carolina, first female governor of South Carolina, and a strong Tea Party supporter, Governor Nikki Haley. Back with your calls coming up. The Michael Medved Show. Start your day with Barbasol Shaving Cream, America's leader for a close shave, close shave America, close shave Barbasol. And we're joined by Nikki Haley. She is the governor of the great state of South Carolina, the very beautiful Palmetto State, where I've had a wonderful time on all the occasions, and there have been many of them, where I visited there. Charleston, absolutely one of the most fascinating, historically rewarding, gorgeous cities anywhere uh, to, to visit. And uh, uh, Nikki Haley is the author of a new book. It is called Can't is Not an Option, My American Story. And it's not just a political book. It is a book about her parents who came as immigrants from India. Her her father taught at a historically black uh, college. And um, Nikki Haley growing up and facing some obstacles as uh, an Indian American and certainly facing some major obstacles when her story does become political, but we will go into those. But Governor Haley, when, when people either meet you or they inter- We did, and, and so it shows a lot about the fact that that could happen in a state, and then this is the same state that elected a 38-year-old Indian American female for governor. Did your father ever experience um, uh, some kinds of hatred or opposition because as a uh, religious uh, Sikh, he, he wears a turban? Well, uh, yes, and in the book you hear me talk about what it's like to be the daughter of someone like that because you see it through through different eyes. You know, there was a time where we stopped at a produce stand on the way to um, Columbia, which was the city, and we were driving, and Dad would always stop at, at produce stands whenever he saw them to support the farmers, and this one um, was a large one, and he went and we started um, picking up some things, and I mean, within just a few minutes, two police officers just flew into the parking lot. Nobody else was at the produce stand, and they stood there at the cash register um, until we left. And Dad and I got in the car, and neither one of us said a word because I knew what had just happened, and he hoped that I didn't see what just happened. And so there were many times of that. There were times where every time we walked into a restaurant, there'd be whispers or there'd be laughing or you know something like that. So. You know, I think more about what my parents went through and the challenges they went through because, you know, during the campaign, my dad would come to events, but he'd stand in the corner. And he'd stand in the corner, I knew, because he was worried that the way he was different would affect my campaign. But I was so proud of who I am and and the parents that I have that I talk about the moment where the, you know, one of my best moments was when I was being sworn in as governor and right there on the stage in front of the world to see were my mom and dad. And, you know, it's, it's important. And I, again, it says so much about America and so much about the great state of South Carolina. Yes, it does. Let's go quickly to Ben in Sacramento, California. Ben, you're on the Michael Medved Show with Governor Haley. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Your story is amazing, and uh, but um, I just wanted to know, I don't know if you guys uh, heard about the question that was asked Mitt Romney about his view on interracial marriages. I did not hear about that. This is the Ron Paul people, and it, it, what it, basically they were trying to trip him up because of a, a, a now discarded Mormon doctrine, and they were trying to uh, tape record Romney. So is that what you're talking about, Ben? No, I'm not talking about the tape recording. I'm just, I'm just asking, um, what, what is the Mormon view now? The, the Mormon view is, I, I, I don't, I, first of all, I'm not a Mormon, okay? But I, I know that Mitt Romney was asked very specifically whether he disapproves of interracial marriages, and he said absolutely not. He does not, this, this is uh, obviously, it's, it's a choice that people make. So, 
Uh, yeah, uh, let's we'll put. Now let's go to Lou in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Lou, you're on the Michael Medved show with Governor Haley. Hi, and I just happen to be a Mormon, and there is no policy on interracial marriage, so I can just fill that in for you right away. Hey, Lou, um, how are you? Thank you. Good. Thanks. I'm, good I'm glad. I'm glad we went to you. <laughs> Thanks. Good timing. Pleasure to talk to both of you. I just wanted to point out the president's had two budgets come up that he's put forward, and neither one of them have ever received a vote from any Democrat in the Congress. As a matter of fact, the last one he just put forward, uh, no Democrat in the House would even put it forward, so the Republicans, to have a little fun, put it forward themselves, and it still didn't get a vote from one single Democrat. So uh, the, the president is a hypocrite, and he's, he's practically insane bringing that up because his record on budgets uh, is his complete failure, and we all understand that. Uh, quick response, Governor Haley, uh, 15 seconds. Lou makes a great point that, you know, a leader is someone that can get things done, and we have not seen that out of this president. I think he is well-intentioned, but he has failed, and I think the American public will vote in November on whether they are better off than they were three years ago, and I know that when they walk into a grocery store or get gas at the pump, they're going to realize that this is not a good way. We'll be right back with Governor Nikki Haley coming up. The Michael Medved Show. Yes. This hour of the Medved Show brought to you by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. Joined by Governor Nikki Haley of South Carolina. She is the author of Can't is not an option my american story and it's a very different kind of story than you normally associate with the republican party a lot of people think republicans particularly conservative republicans are boring elderly rich white people and (laughs) uh, uh, nikki haley comes from uh, a, a a very very different kind of background but an amazingly rich american background uh governor haley just very quickly you've said you will not accept uh a nomination as vice president are you sticking to that absolutely and the reason michael is you know if you see all the sacrifices and the work that we went through in the book of how we actually became governor and what what we had to endure I mean, the people of South Carolina took a chance on me, and I think it's very important that I honor that commitment and that I finish the job that I was given to do. I feel very blessed to be the governor of South Carolina, and so um, if offered, I I certainly would decline. Let's go to uh, Ron in uh, Edmonds, Washington. Ron, you're on the Michael Medved Show with Governor Nikki Haley. Yes. Hi, Michael. Hey. Hey, Ron. Uh, Third-time caller. Hi, Governor. How are you? Great. Thank you. Uh, First of all, my... uh, daughter-in-law our daughter-in-law is from india and i can understand and listening to your story broke my heart oh well so thank you for bringing that to the uh, american people's attention on the discrimination well and you know what i want the the message to be is while we went through those challenges you know we fought through them and i'm a better person because of them those challenges are blessings in my life because they made me stronger um they made me understand things at a different level and I still understand why my parents say that we are so blessed to be in this country and strongly stand by that. So I don't want them to be heartbreaking stories. I want them to be stories that our country has changed for the better. And, you know, we we can always continue to improve, but we have a lot to be proud of. I appreciate that. I had one quick question. Sure. What can we do as conservatives to bring people such as liberals under 40, the age of 40? I live on the left coast. And I'd like to see if we can make any changes here this year to bring those people to sanity, to vote, to understand the mess great, we are in. Great in this question country. for Governor Haley. Governor? You know, and Ron, you know, what I think we need to do is focus and stay on message. If you, re- if you watch the liberal media and if you watch liberals and President Obama, they will try and distract towards another subject. Make them stay on topic. Let them see exactly what we believe and why we believe it. They get caught up in the distraction. If we remind them to stay on the issue, this is about jobs and the economy. This is about debt and our children and our grandchildren and that we can't keep paying for everything. They will get it. Once you talk about wallets and pocketbooks, it comes real close to home. Nikki Haley, her book, Can't Is Not an Option. It's posted up at our website at michaelmedved.com. 
Thank you, Governor, for your contributions to this greatest nation.